I'm Sally Quinn, and I'm 70 years old. You're 70, Sally? I'm 70. It seems like just yesterday you were a young girl around Washington. Yeah, I know. I didn't used to be 70. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Does it feel like you were just a young girl running around Washington yesterday? Well, I feel like I'm a young girl running around Washington today. <laughs> That's very cool. Tell me about that. Well, you know, I, I don't... First of all, I'm married to somebody who's 20 years older, so I always feel like the kid. Um, and secondly... I don't stop. I keep doing exactly what I've been doing before, which is working really hard and playing really hard. I love to have a good time. I love to relax with my friends. And I love to work. And I love what I'm doing. And I, I just, I think that, yeah, I, that the word retirement is not in my vocabulary. I mean, Ben, my husband, still goes to work every day at 90 uh, and has goes out at night and parties and we see friends all the time, and uh, we're constantly involved in all kinds of activities. Uh, there's just no slowing down. And I, I just think as long as you stay active and involved and engaged, that it's hard to grow old. That seems to be a reoccurring theme that a lot of impressive people such as yourself state. But how do you get that across? How do you tell people, how did you do it? How did you, because you went through a change in jobs, right, at some point? Just talk to me about that for a second. I've always, uh, well, the last 42 years I've worked at the Washington Post. And, um, and then I took some time off when my son Quinn was born, and I wrote novels, and I wrote a couple of books. Uh, and, and so I've constantly been involved with the Post, writing for the Post. But I decided about five years ago to start a religion website, which is blew everybody away because I've never been particularly religious, but I got interested in the subject because I thought that it was was going to have, religion was going to have a huge impact and does have a huge impact on our national politics and foreign policy. And the website, surprisingly enough, has been hugely successful. And for me, it is just the most consuming thing I've ever done. I mean, I'm, I'm completely obsessed with it. The, the, I, I'm learning something new every day. I'm meeting all kinds of new and interesting people. I, I'm exposed to ideas and thoughts that I never was before. It's just, I just find it really exhilarating and exciting. And I, I can't wait to get up every morning to do what I do. Did you, when you reinvented yourself as a blogger and with this site, was, was that a hard thing for you to do? having come from the history you did, which was, you know, being a reporter and writing in the old traditional way. And because a lot of people of a certain age will say, I don't want to go online. I don't want to Twitter. I don't want to Facebook. I don't want to blog. I don't want, you know, the way of, was it hard for you to get past that? Or did you just move right ahead with the way the world was going? And don't forget that five years ago in the world of technology is a long time. Things were not what they are now five years ago. And so when I got started, I was really uh, one of the first people to do something like what I'm doing uh, at the Washington Post. So I had a whole team of people I was working with, and they were all really excited about it. And, I, I mean, I wasn't doing the technology. I wasn't building the site. No. I was just basically transferring my skills um, to another venue because um, I had sort of stopped doing actual reported pieces and I was doing a lot more opinion and that's what I do now mostly opinion I mean I've, sometimes I I report the opinion pieces I do so it wasn't that much of a change except for me it was running something and I'd never run anything before so I'm um, you know I had to run the website and I had to hire the people to work for me and I had to sort of have a vision of what I wanted it to look like and how I wanted it to be so that that part of it was and I'm still working on that, trying to work on business side and advertising all things that I've never done before and that are new to me, but are interesting because I'm learning so much. I mean, that's the thing that's just so exciting is the challenge of learning and doing things that you've never done before and, and learning how to do them well. And you're also in charge of your own ship, don't you find? Well, yes. I mean, one of the things that's nice about having a website is that I sort of, I, I do it on my own time. I mean, I work about 12 hours a day generally, uh, but it's my hours, and I work on the weekends. I mean, I'm never not working if, if I'm not actually running the site or getting pieces or writing myself. 
I'm out doing panels and speeches and and you know moderating things and doing television and so I'm out a lot on the streets meeting people making contacts um, and and so I, I it's a very active life as well I'm not just sitting in front of a computer all day long which and also I go to the Washington Post I spend a lot of time at the paper and in meetings with people, although I find I don't get as much done when I'm at the paper because I'm hanging out a lot. <laughs> uh, but that's also invigorating too because most of the people that I work with are in their late 20s and early 30s because they're all social media types. Um, so so that, that gives me a whole new um, sort of a perspective on life is working with people who are so much younger than I am and they're so excited about what they're doing and I'm learning a lot from them. I mean, they look at me and I'm a dinosaur, you know. I'm sort of having to ask them how to do things all the time, but it's so much fun because I'm learning from them. And they and they say to, they like the idea of having somebody older that they can sort of tell how to do what they do. Would you have to admit, I mean, in, you know, I've just gotten to know you in the last year, but you have a reputation of being a go-getter, meaning in your life, which I am, you know, I completely relate because I have the same reputation, which is you see something you want, you, a story, you know, a life, you know how to make things happen for yourself. I mean, you have that ability, um, which I think is a lot of work, and I think that people don't understand that people have to work for that. People, I think, think that things come easily to people when actually they work very hard for them. Not everybody has that gene that you have. What do you say? Because I get a lot of letters from women 50 to 75. I'm stuck. I don't know where to go. I don't know how to get there. All the things I've done my whole life. My children are grown. My job's disappearing. My All the whole living. And I can't get out of it. How do you, what advice do you have? And how would you tell women who may not have the ability and the energy or even the know-how to go out and make things happen for themselves, which is something you clearly always from a very young age knew how to do. And that's a gift. I mean, it's really a personality trait, and it's a gift, but not everyone has it. I, you know, one of, a friend of mine once said, I envy you. <coughs> Excuse me. A friend of mine once said, I envy you because you always know what you want. And I think that that is a huge part of it, is that I figure out what I want, and then I go after it. And um, I think a lot of people just don't know what they want, they want to do. And, and it just seems to me that if you have an interest or a passion, that you ought to follow that. I, I think so many people are stuck because they think they ought to be doing this, or they ought to be doing that, or what would people think, or oh my gosh, that would be off the wall if I tried this. Um, you know, I, Teddy Kennedy was taking painting lessons at the end of his life. His wife gave him um, painting lessons for his last year. Uh, and it was his passion. He absolutely loved doing that. And who would ever have thought of that? And it turns out that he was really good. And as it, so, I, I mean, I think joining, I, and I, this always sounds so trite, but joining different groups where they people share the same interests that you do, or volunteering. Uh, I mean, some of those things are boring and people don't want to do them, but on the other hand, if you figure out something that interests you, I mean, it might be yoga or it might be, you know, I have, I have friends who suddenly got interested in history or um, gardening or whatever else it might be that you've never done before and you wanted to. I mean, I, um, about three or four years ago, decided that I wanted to dance. And so, um, I had done modern dance in college just to get out of my physical education requirement and I'd never danced since and now I dance twice a week. I do ballroom dancing um, with a private uh, instructor and then I do two hours of Broadway jazz dancing every week and I mean this is like a religion for me. I mean everybody knows that on Friday morning between 10 and 12 don't even think about booking me into anything because I am at my dancing class and that is sacred time to me and that just fills me with so much joy I cannot tell you how how much I look forward to that and how I just feel almost levitate when I walk out of that dancing class it just sets me up for the whole rest of the week those two classes and, and so I, I it's just it's that kind of thing I you know 
I, I, I also I exercise every single day. Um, you I look have, great. You say that again because I try and tell people that. Look well, at you. I, I, mean, you I look exercise fabulous. every day. I mean, I, I do something, and I don't do the same thing every day. So I'll, I'll do dancing twice a week. I walk um, at least an hour uh, a day if I'm not dancing. I do yoga. Um, I swim in the summertime uh, when I'm at the beach. I walk on the beach for an hour and a half every day. I mean, there is not, I can't stand it if I'm not doing something, if I don't do some exercise every day, stretching or whatever. Well, you look I work great. out with a trainer. Um, and, that, and so that keeps me feeling vital. I also sleep a lot. Um, I, I have to have nine hours of sleep a night, and I think that sleep is hugely underrated. Uh, you know, there's this myth that um, it really intelligent people don't need more than four or five hours of sleep a night. Well, I've got to tell you, I know a lot of really stupid people who only sleep four or five hours a night. My Happily, everybody in my family is the same. My husband and I and my son all need nine hours of sleep a night, and so we get it. We know that that's what our bodies need. And so we get it, and I think that makes a huge difference because I don't function well when I'm tired, and I don't look good when I'm tired. I can, you know, I'm, I'm, I sometimes feel like, oh well, I'm wasting all this time sleeping, but then I'm so much more um, alert when I'm not when I'm not tired that I can get a lot more done. Um, well, you look, I mean, we're running out of time here, but you know. And I have a magic cream. You have a magic cream. <laughs> well, your face is really, I mean, you look fabulous. And I love you. the idea of Sally Quinn at 70, dancing her way into her future. I think that's a great <laughs> metaphor, and I think that I think many more people should follow it. So thank you, Sally, and maybe I'll come back next year and we'll tape you dancing. All right, sounds good. <laughs>